What is up awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electro Friday Views and today we are reviewing the BPM Imports F15X folding fat tire electric bike. This thing is incredibly powerful at a pretty good price point. Excited to dive into the specs on this bike right here, but first let's roll the B-roll. All right, awesome peeps. So again, this is the BPM Imports F15X folding fat tire electric bike right here. We have reviewed uh, quite a few bikes now from BPM Imports. They are a great brand with a lot of selection. So pretty much whatever you want for style or type, um, they've really got a wide selection here. Um, they do have a one year warranty on the battery for this bike and then for all their bikes and a 90 day warranty for parts. If you want, you can upgrade that to a one year comprehensive warranty but it does cost an extra hundred bucks. Um, so, you know, if you want that, it does cost a little bit more. Now the price of this bike right here is gonna start at $1,500 USD, $1,500 USD. And it's cool because I think this might be the, the most affordable e-bike we have tested with a thousand watt motor and a 21 amp hour battery. We're gonna dive on the specs here more, but um, you know, they've, BPM Imports, I think on this bike specifically, have, has really done a good job of picking and choosing which parts to spend money on um, and which parts to leave at entry level to make for a the most affordable you know, folder that performs as well as you can for the price point. So hopefully that makes sense. But let's dive into the specs here. We, we will start back here with the motor. So it's gonna be a Bafeng 1000 watt motor here in the back. Bafeng, we love these motors as you guys well know. They're powerful, they're torquey and you get a great value, great bang for your buck. 1,000 watts of power. Uh, I believe it's, um, I think it's 120 newton meters of torque for this motor right here. Very torquey, very peppy motor. And it's got a, a top speed. The motor winds out at about 24 miles per hour. We tested even going downhill at this little slope right here. It's just, it doesn't really go fast than 24 miles per hour, um, which is gonna make this a class three uh, e-bike technically. But what's interesting is it's 24 miles an hour. It's a little bit slower than average especially for a thousand watt motor here. And it feels like this motor is custom wound um, for a lower speed. And consequently, what you get with that is much more torque. And this thing is a torquey, torquey monster. You got the short wheelbase, the shorter wheels, powerful motor, high torque, lower top speed. This thing will just, it'll just pop the front end, um, you know, really easy if you are not careful. It's a lot of power, which is really, really awesome. I really like that. You can reach that top speed, of 24 miles per hour with the cadence sensor here, pedal assist, 12 magnet cadence sensor. I think you guys can hopefully see it right in there, right right beneath the uh, that front chain ring, 12 magnets. We've also got a throttle right here on the uh, right side of the handlebars. What's cool is you, with the switch of this button right here, you can make this throttle live from zero miles per hour, which I think is definitely what I like. But if you don't want that, if you want it to have like a safety where you can only use this after you start going, press that button again, and it'll make it dead at zero miles per hour. So quick way to change that setting right there. Very cool. Um, and look, here's the thing with the cadence sensor. There's gonna be latency from the time that you start and stop pedaling to the time that the motor actually activates and deactivates. And that's just something that you're gonna get with any cadence sensor. Compared to a torque sensor, they're just not as precise, not as responsive, um, but they're not as much money. I mean, typically you don't see, I mean, typically, you know, if you want a torque sensor, you're gonna have to spend two grand and above, typically to get that. Um, so that's just the name of the game. That's, that's, that's pretty common right there. Not really a big deal. Battery here. Also, another really impressive kind of stat right here. This is a 48 volt, 21 amp hour Samsung cell Silverfish style battery. So that's a lot, man. You can easily get 60 miles of range out of this thing. Real world, even just using mostly the throttle with the 21 amp hour, you can probably get 30 to 40 miles. Um, Maybe a little bit less if you know if you're hammering the throttle. You know, look, you know, estimated miles. That's always going to be just like a car. It depends on how you ride it. But you know, max range if you are careful, 60 miles, no problem with this big old battery. Now you'll notice with this battery right here, 
it is locking and removable, and removable, but in order to get it out, you have to lift it up like this and it's gonna strike the saddle. So in order to get that battery out, you gotta remove the saddle first, which is one extra step, not a big deal, but just something to keep in mind. It does take a second to remove, <laughs> maybe five seconds more, but you know, hey, for some people that might be a deal breaker, you know? Now this is folding and we are gonna show you how to fold this really quick. But one thing I wanna point out about this frame, something I really like about this style of frame is gonna be this part right here in the middle. It acts as a handle. It's a great, it's, you know, it's also, it's a gusset. It helps strengthen the frame. It's also a handle and it makes it a great way to just pick this bike up just like this. Um, really nice way to, to kind of do that. This also does speak in the frame. It's about 60 pounds overall, this bike. Uh, you know, no suspension, no front suspension, no rear suspension, no seat post suspension. So it's gonna be a little bit of a stiffer ride. Um, it's also part of the reason why it's gonna be that lower price point, the 1500 bucks, no suspension. We are gonna have the fat tires here that are, that, that's gonna add some suspension because these fat tires they have tons of air volume so it is going to give some suspension qualities you know to this bike it's not going to make it super spongy super you know super comfortable but it's going to add a little bit functionality for this bike is actually pretty good it comes stock with a rear rack that's actually welded to the frame so it's not going anywhere you can load this thing up with your backpack with groceries whatever you want and it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to come undone it's not going to come loose over time because it's welded boom to the frame right there so it's i like that it comes stock with that it's not aftermarket um just part of the buy so yeah really cool now in the back here we're going to have a shimano tourney derailleur which is going to be an entry-level derailleur but really not a big deal um, we talked about this a lot before but it doesn't really matter what derailleur you have for a for a hub motor. When you have a, a mid-drive motor, the cadence sensor becomes much more important. Um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the derailleur becomes much more important, but as it stands, it doesn't really matter. And this is one of those things like I was talking about where BPM imports, they they really are spending their money wisely on the parts, on, you know, and they're choosing wisely which parts to upgrade. So um, yeah, entry-level derailleur, not a big deal. Seven speed, you've got a little cage right here to protect the derailleur in case it falls. Nice piece of gear right there. 7-speed SIS index thumb shifter right here. Um, this is probably one of my few gripes about this bike or this setup. I'm really not a big fan of those, those thumb shifters. I mean, they're just so big and bulky. Like if you look, like in order to really activate this, you have to kind of release your entire grip, you know, and it just, I don't know. I would rather see, spend an extra 50 bucks maybe and have like a trigger shifter, but that's just me. And of course you can always swap that out yourself if you wanted to. Not a big deal, but I gotta be nitpicky and try to point out, you know, all the little things here. Also something else that's kind of funky about this bike. And you've seen this before with some of the bikes that are shipped from overseas is, well, first of all, we've got hydraulic disc brakes front and rear, which is great. Tektro hydraulic, hydraulic disc brakes, 160 millimeter rotors here, one in the front and boom, one in the back right there. But you notice something, look, in the back, the disc brake is on the left side. In the front, the disc brake, disc brake is on the right side. Is that a problem? Not really, it's just, it's unusual. Typically you have them on the both side, that's just kind of how they're built. Also something that's a little weird about this bike here is if you grab the front brake lever, that's supposed to activate the front brake. That's pretty standard. On this one, it's switched. So the front brake lever activates the rear brake, left brake lever activates the front brake. So I might take a second to get used to, just something to point out. The stem here, it does fold and it's also telescoping. So you can adjust the max height of the stem here pretty high to accommodate a wider range of rider height. So that's kind of a cool little feature right there. You can also lift this little latch right here, this one, Boom, right there. And you can actually rotate or pivot the handlebars forward and back to really kind of get it, you know, adjusted just how you want. Now, one thing I want to say is when you, if you are a really tall rider and you need to really bring the handlebars up, just be careful about bringing them too high up because when you do raise the handlebars, you're going to raise, you're going to stretch the cables right here. And if you raise it too high and you make a hard turn, you can put a lot of stress in the cables. You could even rip one out. Uh, you could damage it. So something to be mindful of just with that. But speaking of cables, these guys do a pretty good job of cable management. Nothing super fancy or special. I mean, I like that they've got some of them wrapped. It looks nice. They've done, you know, they spent extra time getting them nice and bundled. Nothing's stray. Nothing's going crazy. I really like that. Crazy cables. <laughs> you guys probably know. It's just like, it's a pet peeve of mine. Also, these are externally routed cables, so you can see they're all on the outside of the frame here. 
Um, I think that's fine. That's pretty standard on folders. For the most part, they don't want to route them internally because when the middle folds, it can pinch the cables and it can cause some issues. So uh, that's pretty standard there. I think, um, okay, yeah, on the front here, we do have a headlight. Not very powerful, not very bright. It's just basically to increase uh, visibility, you know, so people can see you coming. Cars can maybe see you on the road. Is it gonna like spit out like tons of light so you can see the road like at night? Not really, it's just not really what it's for. If you wanna ride at night, I would suggest buying an aftermarket light for this thing, throwing it on your helmet or on the bike itself, you know, maybe a thousand lumens minimum. So I wanna fold this up for you guys real quick here. Folding this is pretty simple. Uh, it's just got like a, kind of like a basic two-stage locking mechanism here in the middle of the frame. You're gonna undo it just like that, a quick release, slide it out, push it in, and then lift it up. And there's got a little bolt that slides down right here. So even when this is out, it won't fold until you release that bolt and then fold it like that. So that's kind of like a double stage, nice little safety feature, I like that. Then you can, boom, fold it like this. And you'll see it rests right here, right in this little metal bracket. Just gives it a place to rest. It doesn't tip over when you have it folded. You can also undo the handlebars for an even, even slimmer profile. And if you want, you can actually fold the pedals themselves um, just for like the most streamlined you know, version. If you throw it in your garage, like I put this in the back of our car um, just to get here in the back seat and it fit fine so that's kind of the cool thing about folders is I mean you can really put them just about anywhere when you fold them up unfold it same thing just in reverse bring that latch up fold the frame <laughs> hit the horn <laughs> and uh, yeah that's about it so it only takes a few seconds to fold and unfold not really too difficult here You'll see, actually, looks like I bent this. Let's fix that, boom, all right. So, one other quick thing I wanted to mention about this, uh, the derailleur system, the chain system here. Um, the front chain ring, it's got a double-sided chain ring guard, which is nice because that's gonna help keep this, especially since this is an entry-level derailleur, it's gonna help keep this chain from popping off towards the inside of the outside. It just keeps it locked in there, right? Locked in place, it is plastic. So it's not really like a bash guard. If you get a strike, this is not gonna protect the chain ring teeth. But like I said, it is gonna help keep this locked in place. So that's kind of nice. Um, look, to operate this, this is a key operated. All right, so you have to have your key inserted and turned on. Um, that's like my, I guess with Silverfish style batteries, that's, that's, that's how they work. I don't particularly like that because I don't know, man, like, what if I strike this, like, with my heel or something when I'm riding and I break the key off, and I, I don't know, you know? Like, whatever. I've never had that issue, but it always, like, concerns me. N not a big deal. Again, point out small things, right? But, okay, to turn this bike on here, it's gonna be a long press of the power button. You'll see it comes to life. Four bar battery indicator up here on the top. 25% increments, not very precise, but it does give you a fair idea of how much juice you got left. I think time ridden up here. Pedal assist level, current speed, distance. If you tap the power button, it'll switch to average speed and odometer. Tap it again, it'll switch to max speed. So you see, like I was saying, yeah, 24.7 is 24 is about the max speed. I mean, maybe you could say 25, but really it's about 24. Um, voltage 53.1, that's how you want. If you want to see how much juice is left in the battery, that is cool. You don't always have this on displays. They should start, start incorporating these on all displays because it is a accurate, precise, I mean, you know exactly how much juice is left with the, with the voltage meter, so cool stuff. If you want to turn on the headlight, it's gonna be a long press of the up arrow, and it turns on the backlight right here, and then also the headlight up in the front right there. This side right here, we've got a little horn. 
And then like I was saying, over here is the switch for the throttle. So if you depress it, if it's actually depressed, it's gonna be live from zero miles per hour. If you depress it, if it's pointing out, it's not going to be live from zero miles per hour. So that's how you change that right there. And then uh, here's just a shot of the hydraulic brakes, the Tektor hydraulic brakes from this side, just a little bit closer up, boom. Um, since these are hydraulic, it means you can actually adjust the, the resting position of the brake levers. So if you wanted to, you can actually bring the brake levers in closer, like for the resting position or you can let them out so they rest farther out. Depending on if you have larger or smaller hands, if you're wearing gloves in the winter, it just gives you some more flexibility on like customizing this right here, right? And I think that's it, awesome peeps. We've covered the BPM Imports F15 X folding fat tyler bike. Now it's time to take this bad boy out for a test ride. So here we go. Hey, I got the rock star parking everybody wants out on the street. Dishes. You know I'm a handle, handle my business I'm a boss, boss, boss Baby, I'm a boss, boss, boss Calling all the shots, shots, shots Baby, I'm a boss, boss You know I'm a baller I keep the mansion running even when the power's not Dimes I got Cause every day and every night You know that I'm living large But I'm on a diet And I'm trying not to eat the carbs Gonna get a pimped out To the Honda Civic You know how I handle Handle my Awesome peeps, that is pretty much it for the review of the BPM Imports F15X folding fat tire like a bike right here. In summary, again, this thing starts for $1,500 USD or $1,500 USD. And the coolest thing about this bike, in our opinion, like we talked about in the main review, is the fact that it's got a thousand watt motor on a folding bike and that the price is 1500 bucks. You don't often see that. Um, the power on this one is kind of, a way above average, even for a thousand watt. And again, because like we talked about, it's got that custom wound motor for the top speed of 24 miles per hour, which is a little bit slower than average, but man, the torque on this thing is incredible. We've also got that 21 amp hour battery for tons and tons of range. The fat tires are the extra kind of cushion, a little bit of suspension qualities right there. This is really going to fit well for anybody who wants a folding electric bike that is first and foremost powerful enough to get them up the hills in their area. So if you live in a, in a hilly area, this is really gonna be a good 
good bike for you. Uh, if you have limited space, this is going to be a good bike for you. If you, especially if you live in places where you've got sand, snow, or mud, and you need the fat tires, that's going to be helpful. But really, the fat tires just make for kind of a, a nicer ride overall. So even if you're riding on the streets, you're still going to appreciate the fat tire versus the regular, you know, uh, like 1.75 inch wide or two inch wide tires, whatever. Uh, so look, awesome piece. That is it for the review of the uh, BPM Imports F15. X right here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, if you do live in California, Oregon, or I guess, gosh, pretty much anywhere right now in the United States or even parts of Canada, as you can see, you know, it's still really smoky here. I hope you guys are safe and well, um, you know, just staying out of the fire, man, and um, staying out of the smoke and staying healthy and um, hope you guys are doing okay with COVID. It's kind of, it's just a, it's a, it's a sketch time right now and uh, really just hoping you guys are all right. So thank you again for watching. Have a great day and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.